Walls are versatile families in Revit that can be made up of multiple materials. In this exercise, we'll learn the process of placing foundation walls, which support the building and go into the ground, into a Revit project. For your information, this is the same process as placing framed walls. If you're not familiar with that terminology of framed wall, a framed wall is the type of wall most likely surrounding you in the room that you're currently watching this video in. Usually it's made up of multiple layers and materials, and it's not made out of just thick concrete. But in this exercise, we're going to go ahead and start to place in some foundation walls. So to start, we need to come up here to the wall tool. We'll select on that. And we have some options here, including this basic wall foundation, 24 inch concrete. And that's the one that we want to use. If it did not show up for you, just go ahead and select on right here in the type selector list where it has basic wall foundation or whatever it says for you. And then just select foundation 24 inch concrete off of your list. Next, we're going to move over here, zoom in just a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to place a foundation wall going from A-1 over and down, back over again, and then back up in order to finish it off. Before we start clicking, though, we need to make sure that it's going down. In this case, we can see that there's a depth associated with it. We want to make sure that there's a specific height associated with it. In this case, it says unconnected, and it's going to go down 12 feet into the ground. Well, that might be okay depending on your project, but in this example, I'd like it to go down to where the top of our footing is at. So we can pick that top of footing level off of our pull-down list. And that associates itself with the different levels that are in the project. And we can see that that'll go down to 15 foot below where our first level is at. The location line, in this case, we're gonna keep it at wall center line, but we can also draw your walls to the finished face of the outside of the wall, to the finished face of the inside of the wall, so either the very outside or very inside of the walls, or to the structural parts of the walls if this wall has multiple materials associated with it. In this case, though, we're going to go with the wall center line, so right down the center of the wall. There's an option here for chain. Make sure there's a check mark in there that's going to allow us to draw one wall right after another. We can just leave the defaults for everything else. Now go ahead and just move your mouse until you get to the intersection of A and 1 and click, and then move over in this direction. Come over here to this spot and click. You can zoom in and out really easy by just using the wheel on your mouse. Zoom down and click. Come over and click. And then come back up again and click. Now I realize the columns are not completely supported by these walls right now, and that's because in the future we'll be putting some extra structural members on the underneath side of these. But let's go ahead and take a look at this in a 3D view now. So just come up here to the default 3D view and select on it. We can now see that we have a concrete foundation wall going around the outside of our building. Now it's important to remember that whenever you're working with walls, they have many options associated with them. And since we say options, we know that most of those options will show up on the options bar going across the top. But the important thing to really to remember about placing walls is to uh, remember that we need to specify their location, ideally in a plan view, and where we want to go. So do we want them to go down a certain number of feet in unconnected height, or do we want them to go down to a certain level?